voice low Fucked, stuck, zombie Voice low Zombie Voice low Zombie Voice low So, Elsa Cross, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Ford, let's give it up for them. So I met Elsa, um, she actually came to one of the first projects I was working on, we were in the middle of construction of this restaurant, and she happened to be walking by and saw what we did and decided just to come in and check it out. There was no signage or anything. And um, so she came in and said, you know, I, I like what was going on and I thought maybe this might be a place that I would like to work. Um, they hired her immediately and um, she's been working there for about three years. Um, in conversations with her, she talked about, again, um, coming to town, coming to Austin, trying to form her band. And so I suggested that we do um, some branding for Elsa. So uh, my wife, Grace, is a graphic designer, and she put together a lot of her posters and T-shirts and websites. And um, I also have been going to Creative Mornings for a while and usually starts off with a really kind of a, a slow vibe. And I figured since um, I'm not a morning person, I'd get Elsa to do uh, Zombie for her as love. And, um, also, she opened up for Merle Haggard, so now she's opened up for me and Merle Haggard. <laughs> so, um, 8.30 in the morning, I usually have trouble making eye contact, let alone talking to 125 people. So when Ben first approached me and asked me about speaking, I was like, reluctantly agreed, and he said, now um, I need a headshot from you. So I talked to my friend Rami, and she took a shot, and I thought, well, what do I generally feel like at 8.30 in the morning? <laughs> so as opposed to giving you some sort of smiling headshot, and then you guys were like, man, he seemed really kind of down, didn't he? I thought we would start with this and then build up from there. Chance. Story about Chance. In 2011, my wife and I moved to Austin from Syracuse, New York, by way of Richmond, Virginia, where my folks are. We stayed there for a couple of days. 1,945 miles, driving one of these big rigs, the biggest Penske truck that you can get, except for ours also had a U-Haul trailer attached to the back of it. So 2011, for those of you who remember, was the hottest summer on record in Texas since they've been keeping records hot. 100 degrees, I think 100 days straight in a row. So I arrived after many days on the road and unloaded the biggest Penske truck that you could get and a U-Haul trailer. And my wife says, hey, want to go to a dinner party? So I'm thinking, <laughs> nope, not really. She said, my friend Blair is in town from Mexico City and we're having a dinner party for her, some friends of her, so I thought it would be great we could go meet some people. And I'm thinking, um, actually Blair uh, was at our wedding, that's the only time I'd ever met her, was just once. So um, I'm thinking, well, look around you, honey. Um, we've got rooms full of boxes. All this stuff has to need to be unpacked. I'm really not into going to a dinner party right now. How about that dinner party, she says. Anybody want to take a guess what happened? So we do what you do when you get invited to a dinner party. We went to the Whip Inn, picked up some Shiner, uh, some hummus, and some pita chips to go to the dinner party. So the dinner party was held by these two roommates, uh, Kevin, who's a photographer, and Kara, who's a chef. And again, it was for our friend Blair. Well, Grace's friend Blair, I had met her once, uh, who's a graphic designer who lives in Mexico City. So it was nice. I mean, I, I, I got over it. We met a lot of fun people. Um, Tim was a person that we met there. Tim, some of you obviously know Tim. Uh, Tim is a lawyer here in town. Um, and um, Jessica. Jessica is a chef. Uh, she was there with her newborn, Hollis. And Chelsea. Um, Chelsea does a lot of things. I think she's kind of like a fire starter. Um, so, just putting things in context, uh, my wife and I have a small firm here in Austin. We do 2D work and 3D work, and um, my first actual 
job, um, was selling rocks for a nickel in El Paso. And just so you understand, the rocks that were a nickel were in the Folgers can. The ones that are on the table, are those are higher end. Those are like $2 rocks. Just drawing people in with the nickel thing, <laughs> trying to upsell them on the larger rocks. So some of my earlier work, These guys were a big influence in growing up. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember the Groovy Ghoulies uh, cartoon. And then we all had our heroes as kids. Mine was Evil Knievel and Big Ed Daddy Roth. I don't know if you guys know Big Ed Daddy Roth. Um, he sort of the, started the whole thing about putting images on t-shirts and selling them. Brilliant. So um, from there, I went on to school like you do, um, and got my undergrad degree in interior design. Got out and started a company, did a bunch of stuff. And uh, one of the jobs that I worked on was a studio for my former college roommate, Frank, who had a company, graphic design company called Elevation. And um, was popping in there one day, uh, Frank did a lot of graphic design for a lot of my 3D projects. And I met this girl, um, Grace. This is her contemplating a cupcake. Um, and from there, it was uh, love at first sight, as they say. So I had been there doing a lot of stuff. Um, Grace had a little bit of the wanderlust, and she convinced me to go with her to Providence, Rhode Island, while she checked out graduate programs. I said, sure, what the hell, I'll take a trip. So uh, she was really interested in their graphics program, and I thought, well, while we're up there, I'll go look at their industrial design program. Um, basically what happened was I didn't really think about graduate school. She decided not to go to graduate school, and I decided to go to graduate school. Um, so you do what you do when that happens, and you restore a Volkswagen van, um, and you drive cross country for a couple of months. So we referred to ourselves as the fuck you hippies and went out and hit the road. Um, we ended up about halfway running into the San Jose in Austin. I had been here for a South by many years before, didn't remember a whole lot of it, um, and thought, you know, let's go back, let's check it out while we're going cross country. Uh, we literally backed into a vehicle, the San Jose vehicle, while we were there and decided to prove that we were legit, we would stay there, it ended up staying for a week and fell in love. So from there, I drove Grace out to San Francisco, where she ended up staying for a couple of years doing graphic design stuff, and ended up coming back to Austin. I, of course, went on to graduate school in Providence, got my master's in industrial design, ended up um, in Syracuse, New York, which looked a lot like this image. Um, a lot of the time. Um, and I was hired to come up there to the university to start a multidisciplinary design program, sort of an experimental uh, program called CoLab, Collaboration Laboratory. Um, it was very cold in Syracuse, and so I enjoyed actually coming to Austin and visiting Grace while she was here. I uh, spent a lot of my vacations here. And so one December, we got engaged while we were staying at the San Jose on Christmas Eve got married in Richmond, came back to Austin, and honeymooned in the San Jose. You guys <laughs> getting the theme here? <laughs> um, so then, from there, I moved Grace back to Syracuse. And you can imagine how well that went over. Uh, she lasted about one winter, 16 feet of snow, and said, okay, time to go back to that place. So, that brings us back to the dinner party. <laughs> the dinner party for Blair, the girl that I had met one time at our wedding. So um, going through some of the folks I met, Tim, the lawyer, um, Tim and I got acquainted in the kitchen doing shots of mezcal, which is what you apparently do at dinner parties in Austin. We started talking, and he confessed to me that he had had a breakup and was getting ready to move out of his apartment, and he was getting rid of all of his stuff. You know, and in the course of conversation, I told Tim uh, what I did, and um, I said, you know, hey, if you need any help, and he was like, no, I 
don't need any help. I told you I'm getting rid of all of my stuff. I'm not moving anything. I said, no, no, if you need any help designing your new place, that's what I do. I'm looking for work. I don't have anything going on. So said, yeah, that'd be cool. Why don't we work on designing some furniture? So he was moving into a little bungalow in East Austin, uh, or sorry, in South Austin off of uh, South Congress. And so, again, it was my chance to really get in and do what I would interpret as Austin design. So I had been seeing this guy's work, uh, Federico Archuleta, uh, all over town. You know, he did the uh, I Love You So Much, or I'm not sorry, uh, the, the heart with the two skulls facing each other. You see his stuff everywhere, the Lady of Guadalupe. And so we decided to do this uh, sofa. Uh, it's cowhide on the bottom, leather. He did the airbrush, and then we did sort of the old traditional uh, tuck and roll upholstery. Um, started building some furniture. I did this with Jesse Hartman uh, from Shift Build, who's an amazing builder, um, Cypress and um, uh, Steel. And then we did a, a little table with rebar and reclaimed uh, longleaf pine. Um, and then I worked with my friend Brad to do some art for Tim for his place, uh, Los Muertos uh, skulls done with uh, Mexican flag colors, basically. Um, so again, it was had a lot of fun. We got to work with some local people, do some residential stuff, try to get back in the in the swing of things. Um, Jessica, who I mentioned, I also met at the uh, dinner party. Um, Jessica was a chef, is a chef, is a pastry chef, and her and her husband had just come back from Mexico City. Uh, he was a chef at Trio, and they were looking at potentially doing a restaurant in Mexico and decided to actually come back here. They were looking for spaces. We struck up a conversation, and she said, you know. Um, we're looking for uh, a, a space to do a restaurant. I said, I'm looking for a restaurant to design. So how kismet. Um, so ended up working with them and did the design for Lenoir over on South First. Um, some of you may have been in there before. They just got voted uh, number one restaurant in Austin. Um, at the time, Todd and Jessica starting out didn't have a whole lot of money, and I didn't have anything to do. So I helped them build a lot of the furniture, hang the lights, did a lot of the finishing in there. Um, again, we use a lot of things from the uh, reclaimed. It's part of what uh, what I believe in is using reclaimed materials. Um, so this, uh, the cabinets are from Habitat. Uh, they're um, basically recycled from other locations. Um, and then the frames I picked up while I was thrifting all over Austin. From there, I worked with them on a new concept uh, that they just opened up called Metier, which is a cooking store. Uh, our friend Blair from Mexico City did the graphic design for that project. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, it's, it's fantastic. They do a lot of vintage cookware, vintage cookbooks, new stuff. Um, and I'm currently working with Todd on a new concept. Uh, Grace and I are both working on JT Youngbloods. Um, Youngbloods was a sort of a fast food chicken place that came to Waco, started in Waco, and was in about 20 locations. Um, long before KFC, back in the, the 50s. And so we're bringing it back to life. Sort of think of Hop Dottie does chicken, I guess. Um, we've got a location on airport, so look for us. So um, while I was, while I'd finished up with Lenoir, um, I took Tim out, remember Tim, we talked about him earlier. I took Tim out to celebrate the work that we had done. We were sitting at the bar, and while we were sitting there, I overheard some women behind me at the table talking about, you know, I wonder who did this place. And so I turned around and said, I, I, I know who did the place. I did the place. And it turned out to be um, the girls from Bread and Butter, uh, Meredith, uh, with their office was out on South First as well. She said, you know, I love what you've done. I don't think we can afford you. And I said, trust me, you can afford me. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> again, at the time, I didn't have much work going on. So I came on board and actually painted out their office, um, built a lot of the furniture, the clock in the birdcage or hand drawings that I did, um, and then uh, salvaged a lot of chairs from Trash Day um, for their conference table and searched high and low for cookie jars that actually went with my color scheme. Uh, and the lights are hanging lights that we salvaged from uh, reclaimed space again. Um, so during that time, again, I was just pretty much tackling one job at a time. We got a, a, a garbled voicemail uh, on our answering machine. And Grace said, you know, I think it might just be a 
a wrong number, prank call, I'm not sure. I said, no, let me, let me follow up on it. And it turned out um, it was a young chef who was from Austin, a former DJ who had moved away to Los Angeles and came back to open up a ramen place. Um, so I met with him at what was formerly the 360 Cafe and um, sat down and I said, you know, what are, what's your ideas? And he said, well, I, you know, I lived here for a while. I want to open up a ramen place. I said, okay, great. And this is the place. Fantastic. What's your budget? And he's like, well, I got about $5,000. I said, whew, <laughs> okay, for what $5,000? Um, he said, you know, it's what I got. We had to stretch it. So again, I didn't have anything going on. So I did a lot of the build out myself. Um, the furniture came from a defunct Red Lobster in uh, Round Rock. Um, Grace had the wonderful idea to drill some holes in the back of the seats to sort of mimic the Japanese flag only in reverse. And we worked with a lot of just off the shelf rope, OSB, pretty basic parts. Um, at the same time, I pulled in a local graffiti group called the Blue Dozen and um, worked with them on the bathrooms. Uh, just gave them some basic requirements, said, you know, uh, here's your color palette, black, red, and white. Everything must have to do with uh, uh, Japanese influence. And about six, eight guys piled into two bathrooms for a very long weekend of pizza and beer drinking. Um, so from there, we're actually working with Tatsu on a commissary kitchen project. And then this is the new ramen Tatsuya, which is going to be on South Lamar. Um, we've actually done all of the drawings in-house uh, from the ground up project, so pretty exciting. Um, Billy Jukes, who spoke to Creative Mornings, I guess about two months ago, um, is doing a enormous um, dragon mural, two dragons fighting inside, which is pretty exciting. He's doing it on site. So uh, look for it, first of the year on South Lamar. Um, so again, as I do, uh, once we opened up the restaurant, the first ramen Tatsuya, uh, we went out to eat. Uh, to have some ramen. I was with my friend Gardner, who's built a lot of the furniture in the space. And um, we were talking about what we had done and all of that. And this guy sitting at the community table with his date leans in and says, um, so you're in the industry. And I thought, well, what industry are you talking about? Specifically, he said, the service industry. And I was like, well, I, I guess we provide a service, but we, we design restaurants. He said, that's great. We're looking for somebody to help us out. Um, so it turns out he was a chef at Barley Swine and they were opening up Odd Duck. Uh, they were working with an architecture firm and everything was going great, but they wanted somebody to come in and help with some finishes um, and some furniture. And so I got involved with them, started working with, again, some reclaimed materials, uh, designed the stools, uh, Litmus Industries, who I work with a lot, built the stools, it's all reclaimed pine. Um, we did some light fixtures in there uh, that we used old, old feed sacks. Uh, and actually Mike from Beef and Pie, his wife Ais actually made the, the shades for us. Um, and so during that whole process, which was great, we were starting to do some, some restaurant work. Uh, there was a customer that kept coming into Ramen Tatsuya, unbeknownst to me really enjoyed the product and the space. And so he turned out to be one of the investors for Uchi and uh, Uchiko. So he got in touch with a few people and said, you know, there's this guy, he works on extremely tight budgets, does some creative stuff. And I ended up doing the offices for Uchi and Uchiko. Um, from there, it, uh, it led me to work with um, Michael Shu's office and creating St. Philip, which is pretty meta, right? Um, so, Chelsea, fire starter. Um, Chelsea I met, it was sort of later in the evening. Um, my wife and I, Grace actually had more conversations with her than I did. Uh, this was long after the mezcal shots in the kitchen. Um, it was that part of the night where you're sort of standing in line in the bathroom with, you know, f uh, four or five other people. Um, and we struck up a conversation and Chelsea said, so I understand you do industrial design. And uh, I said, yeah, that's true, I do. Um, she said, I've got this idea uh, for a furniture line. Um, and I'm, I'm sure some of you realize as designers, you, you have those conversations at a party and 
someone's like, oh, what do you do? I, I've been always dreaming about doing this thing. And you're like, okay, yeah. Um, and so she's like, no, no, I really, seriously, I have this furniture line I want to talk to you about. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, and so she kept uh, blowing up my inbox. Finally, she said, why don't I take you out to lunch? And I was like, okay, food is good. Let's go have lunch. Um, so from there, she started talking to me about her ideas. And I started thinking, wait a minute, these are really good ideas. Um, and it sort of dovetailed into some of my, my thesis work. So um, basically, we talked a lot, sat down with Grace, my wife, and Mabel was born. Um, so the concept behind Mabel is creating a line of furniture that's easily moved, uh, that can be, um, we, we, we become a nomadic society. So this idea that can you create things that are easily knocked down, easily moved, they're affordable using sustainable materials. So we got together, started coming up with some concept drawings, um, thinking through the process, trying to figure out, okay, how do we pull all this together and keep it locally and keep it cost effective? Um, we ended up working with Litmus Industries, Tony and Lori Linder uh, came together and started working through some prototype processes. And the idea was to create a, a system as opposed to thinking about a single individual piece of furniture that you get tired of and sort of you, you know, trash, sell and get something new, but thinking about a concept that could grow with you. So starting off with this sort of singular point of the seat pan. Um, and as you can see, here's some of our uh, prototypes that we've worked through. The seat pan is, is a steel powder coated, which we're trying to work through in aluminum right now. But you can change out all of the different leg forms. So with the same seat, fan, seat, seat, seat pan, it can become uh, a lounge chair, it can become a tall bar table, bar stools, a lamp. Uh, the lampshade can become uh, a trash can. Um, so we're currently right now looking for uh, manufacturers. We're researching manufacturers in Texas and U.S. and our hope is to actually take this thing to market um, sometime in May. Um, here's a little bit of Mabel in action. This is a space that we did for LifeWorks. So it's really, I just come back to the dinner party. Um, I'm a pretty passionate person. Uh, I like to stay busy. Um, and so I'm fairly certain I would have found things to do when I got here. However, I took a chance going to one dinner party. Um, and from there, you can see it sort of uh, snowballed. Uh, you know, from the people that I met turned into other things, turned into other things. And so I sometimes wonder what would have happened if I hadn't gone to the one dinner party uh, reluctantly. Um, I'm sure other things would have happened, but I'm fairly certain my path would have been different. So. I just wanted to tell that story and invite you all to take some chances.
to the world With pen around to read my mind I had to shut off my thoughts I had to stop the hands of sound Shallow falling Being dark, I swear we gone. Well, give me a sunrise. Being dark, I swear we gone. Well, give me a sunrise. Being darkness, we'll be gone.